me with the clipboard is the most organic me. <laughs> the most natural version of myself uh, has a clipboard and a pen. <laughs> I have a sign, I'm sure. <laughs> it's something. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome back. Thank you so much for being here, for eating ice cream with us, for participating in the open mic. That was amazing. Thank you so much. I didn't have to beg. <laughs> I know. Y'all filled up the slots. Yay. Yeah, it was a really, really good open mic. Thank you. Um, we're going to move on to our featured readers. Yeah. Uh, a couple of them are frequenters of our open mics. So we're really excited to hear some more of their work. Um, and I'll introduce our first one. Like most writers, Dorian Elston has adored words for as long as she can remember. She first published a poem of hers at age 13, wrote scripts for a youth television series, composed short stories, wrote lyrics, and penned several long, dry academic research papers in grad school. <laughs> the common thread, of course, is her love of words and how they are both the common and miraculous characters of meaning from one mind to another, from one heart to another, and best of all, from one soul to another. In this new season of her life, Dorian is returning to the fir this first love and feels very privileged to share her recent work with you tonight. It is her hope that her words resonate with you and of course, if she's very lucky, touches your soul. Her favorite flavor of ice cream is vanilla Swiss almonds. <laughs> Good evening, it's such a privilege to be here, honestly. Um, I've been here before and I usually don't introduce my work or say anything ahead of time because I want the poems to speak for themselves. I want them to resonate with you and what you pull out of it. But since I'm reading so many things tonight, I did have a couple things. I'll do the less important thing first. I'm not really sure why, but in this season of life, I've been um, using a lot of Greek mythology in my writing. And I think it's because it's, it's intrinsically personification symbolized all rolled into one. Uh, the second thing I want to say is that um, I just love being around other artists, and I think as we already saw tonight, that we're practitioners of the verbal vivisection. We cut ourselves open and say, here's me, and that is so incredibly brave and gorgeous, and um, I've done that tonight. I've had, just to be really blunt, as you will soon see, been in a very rough season of life, and so when I cut myself open, what comes out has been very tough. But um, I share this with you, a group of strangers who I trust anyway. And I just thank you, um, and we'll get started. The first one is called Medusa. I remember your mouth above my face. The steamy breath of venom, no kisses from those lips. Only bites that fell like hailstones, slashing apart in young meadow where there should have been wildflowers you made a graveyard of stone. I dwelled among your decay, the wake of death under your gaze. I started to scream, I am alive! But you pressed a scaled finger to my lips. Shh, you hissed. As your hands slithered open and sealed my mouth, I felt the poison enter through the wounds you made. Your toxic halo serpents bared their curved fangs and prepared to strike again. When one is young, one can grow to accept the strangest things as normal. You are Medusa in an apron. No one but me bled. You pulled back your thin lips, a garish serpentine smile, and the world was deceived. You made me to devour me. I nourished you as you starved me. You toyed with your food. I was too small to fight back, too weak to know I could. One day came when you needed meat, as so many other days before. Your fangs exposed, your sinews tensed, your head reared back. And as you lunged at me, I struck back. Somehow, the suburban Perseus, the Lilith eyes flashed, the tendrils hung limp, mouths agape. I am alive, I roared among your dead things. And I walked away. The Gorgon's head remains on your neck, but I do not forget what you are or what you did. The nightmare in your slithering shadow has faded, but I still dream of fangs. I will always have the scars, but I can lift my head knowing, not for you, monster, but for me, Athena's curse has been broken. You are dying now, your crown of vipers weak and wizened, Increasingly impotent poison infects others, 
but not me? Will you grieve me when I'm gone? I will not even notice. I lost you long ago. I lost you when your teeth first entered my flesh, when you first coiled into Medusa. The second poem is called Child. Thighs and haunches, life ignites, swirling in sweaty sheets. Fluttering first, heels and fists, emerging like a titan from Olympus. Mother Atlas shoulders the world, never seen before but treasured, counting ten and ten again. The jewel is perfect and mewling. Power through powerlessness, the sun and all the planets. Everything revolves around the miracle who scoots and crawls, perched on wobbly tiptoe. Chimes of crystal laughter ring out in the air. First tea, first days, textbooks and sleepovers, heartache and car keys. The conveyor belt escalates. Life is snapshots, greedily committed to memory. Tall and beautiful now, another neck must bend upwards. Incredulous words too soon spoken. A dagger of goodbye plunged into a soft heart. Pride and pain cut deep. The fresh face looks back with a smile, a wave of promise and beauty, sloppy packing for new horizons. Solitary tears contain the brutal truth that a job well done is a job ended. This one is ghost. I cannot touch you, but you never leave me. Like Catherine on the moors, you knock and knock to be let in. Incorporeal and immediate, I am powerless to keep you out. The air filled with the sound of souls ripping apart, primeval wails, unearthly and terrifying. I crumpled to the ground as hands clutched and clawed at me. Your eyes were closed. Your chest was still and frozen. How many times had I laid my head there and felt its gentle rise and fall? I kissed your icy cheek as my tears bathed your face, washing you, preparing you for the grave. My fingers entwined with your salt and pepper curls while the undertaker looked on. I spoke to you of our babies before you were wheeled away. I enfolded our sobbing children, and I did grasp then that you would not leave us, not really. You are ever present in your absence, the still open wound where you should be is everywhere. In all the life events since then, you are the deafening silence that howls, I am not here. A living photograph where you have been torn away, and that jagged edge is our flesh. Cocoon. All I ever wanted was to fly. Watching with covered eyes, Peeking through the veil, the thousand and thousands soaring creatures above my head, dancing upon air in the blue. I know my time will come, stretching stained glass appendages, ascending with the others, high and free. Patience, patience, I tell myself, alone and quiet, waiting, cramped and motionless, waiting. Sunlight and moon glow touch the encasement, their dance of light and shadow over and over again. Spring green, summer yellow, autumn bronze, winter silver, pass before me over and over again. Through one small crack, watching those who take to the sky, I wriggle and push. It must not time to be break free. Patience, patience, I tell myself. More sun, more moon, more seasons, glorious tableau tantalizingly close but intangible, straight jacket cocoon. I should be airborne by now, iron strands surround me, unyielding, mock my battle to break free, my wings tightly folded, cut and aging. Can they carry me if I ever emerge? Alternately silent and struggling, I am trapped. Alternately stubborn and despairing, hope is elusive, necessary. Far above my aching, decaying, I see the others flying free. This one is called 
This one is arms full. The dubious blessing of empty hands. When those all around are carrying jewels and joy, I glower at my hollow palms and wonder where mine is. Life is a capricious pickpocket. I bat his hands away from my threadbare coat, but he just giggles and ducks around the corner for next time. These hands have no one to touch. These arms have no one to embrace. This heart, near bursting the dam with so much to give, calls out to a love that never answers back. Is there a blessing to these empty hands? Nearly free of the chains that mummified me in cold steel, there are no roadmaps to chart my steps. There is no promise, good or bad. There's only a tremulous sound of possible. Squinting at the horizon that is neither lit nor dark, each unsure step does not always move me forward. I brace myself like an arrow about to launch from a bow, finding a target blindfolded. There is a blessing to empty hands. I have nothing I must put down in order to gather the new, yearning to take up life in arms. Echo, nothing moves anymore. Nighttown towels yet hang were placed that morning. One dish, one fork, one cup. Some love is buried, a coffin nail in the heart that aches and twinges in remembering. Some love is moved, filled forgetly, forgetfully with self-created focus and young potential and left behind four walls that have nothing to echo. Always too little. An old frame encircling the faded past that killed the future. Hands that have always had to build from scraps just are uncertain and find no purpose. The days dance cruelly by, equally possible and poisoned. The desire to breathe with withered lungs, strain for noxious gasps that bring no satisfaction. Trapped in corners nowhere. Labyrinthian hall of mirrors with nothing to mock back. Eyes that yearn to see. Hope lies crouched and winged in the distance, straining for, but just beyond. Dissipating like dandelion seeds on a wind that is not perceived. Hours, hours everywhere and not a one to fill. Life is not life when merely surviving. Cruel irony. But how can the strong box be filled with only ancient echoes? Diametric Pandora, the ugly things swarmed inward and emptied the box, and hope flares haughtily out of reach. And finally, ruins. I know you can't see me. My steps have been too many here on the ingenue road that paves this fantasy. I am the voice that calls out to faces straining elsewhere. I am the hands that cradle the wounds of generations and set loose like bright doves new life into a gaping future. Every sunrise erases me by inches. Every finger of moonlight that pierces the shadows touches my face and robs me of accolades. The clocks tick and people turn away, fading, ever fading. Every wave of disregard erodes the fragile certainty of meaning when it takes three gazes to recognize that I stand before you. I am wiser now, but you do not see. I am stronger now, but I am pushed past and trampled underfoot like a spent flower among nubile fireworks. When I was young and broken, I was the object of your lust and fascination, the promise of lush fruit and a crotch vase that you clamored for, the clumsy heat of young men circling like equinox druids, worshipful and carnivorous. I cannot claim success, but I recognize surviving. The fist that shoves itself into my mouth to stifle this irrelevant voice, how you wanted these lips once, though I never saw it. God, I miss being beautiful. Mother Sledgehammer was relentless. The preternatural ruin among the smooth goddesses who do not yet fully know their own power. Young sisters, push forward where I could not tread, but do not forget me. Stand on my pieces that tessellate at your perfect feet. I am your invisible steps. 
Let me come with you into the horizon that you paint with flame feminine. Let the combustion you roar into existence ignite away from me too. Because this relic now knows how to play with fire. Thank you so much.